I really recommend the Britney memoir if you have not read it yet. Okay, do you guys wanna just jump into it? Who read the memoir? Because again, like I said, audiobook's only five hours. Definitely recommend it. Like I said, narrated by Michelle Williams. Really, really good. Just like such a vibe. And the beginning intro was done by Brittany herself. It makes me wonder if I wrote a book, would I do the audio for it? I don't feel like I could do it. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think I could do it very well. I almost wish I could pay somebody better than me to read a book if I ever did one. But I really liked that she chose Michelle. I think it really turned out great. I think the vibe was on point. Everything about it was really just wonderful. Um, really recommend reading it. I got it through Audible myself. You know, did you see Brittany got pulled over? Brittany is always being, people are always messing with Brittany. And like I said in my podcast, like her road to recovery will be a spectrum. I think I, I started off the podcast and I got one little comment from someone that stood out to me where I started off the podcast talking about how women are disregarded, mentally ill women, even when they've recovered. And the person said, well, maybe because they haven't recovered, but that's not how recovery works. Recovery doesn't work like, oh, I went to AA and now I'm recovered. It's a spectrum, right? It's a spectrum. And so I think people forget that it is a spectrum. Recovery is sort of ongoing. It's why people who have even been sober 30 years still call themselves alcoholics. And so when you're talking about recovered or recovery, to me in my bubble, they're kind of synonymous even though to other people they're not. Like if you date somebody who has PTSD, they might never not have PTSD. I know so many men in the military who have PTSD. It's not like their wives date them for 20 years and then it goes away. A lot of these women will see their husbands into the grave still suffering from PTSD. But there is a part of the, the recovery spectrum in which you've now gotten help. You're now in the you know, kind of maintenance part of it. And so you're having a relationship with it in that context. And I think that's really, really important. You know what I mean? Brittany was speeding and swerving through lanes. Watch the body camera. Oh my gosh, no, Brittany. So here's the thing, right? I want to make it clear that if Brittany still doesn't have a good team around her and Brittany still doesn't have the help she needs, it's going to be a very difficult recovery. Brittany needs Brittany in her life. Somebody get Brittany Spears my number. Somebody get me in contact with Britney Spears. I swear to God, I could change this woman's life. Like there's something about it. Now, of course, I'm not fully knowledgeable, but man, the things I've gone through in the last three years, I feel like I've gotten so many more tools. I tell you guys the infamous story of how I mishandled my friend's psychosis because I didn't have the tools. And now that I have those tools, I'm like, okay, cool. Now I feel like I can handle that a little bit better. Not fully, not a pro like I'm not a professional in a mental health way, but I feel like Britney doesn't just need mental health support. She needs philosophy support. One of the things I talked about on my podcast, did you guys notice if you read the memoir, she never talks about values. She talks about what she thinks is right or proper or good or wholesome, but she never talks about values. This girl is not going to recover without values. And so we need to get her some sort of connection with philosophy, a, an interest in knowledge, an interest in knowing herself, right? Like, I really want to get her some sort of connection to figuring out, like, what does Britney want? And what does Britney really believe is right or wrong in a, in a really significant way, right? What is she going to value so much that no matter the circumstances, she acts accordingly through the difficult part of her recovery? And I think that's really, really hard to see. Like, just because Britney... Um, wrote this oh hold on my legs are so bad from my fibro just because Brittany wrote this book and she's facing herself doesn't mean she's going to be perfect or perfectly happy I that's the part of my podcast that I think I want you guys to hear if you listen to it is like everyone thinks they want the mentally ill to be packaged in a way that's comfortable for them that's not how it works right? It's not comfortable. Sometimes it is difficult, but it's also more difficult because the people around you make it more difficult. So, you know, if you tell me Britney Spears was like swerving on the road, all I hear is like, okay, now we have to get Britney different tools. You know what I mean? We have to give her a driver. We have to give her help. We have to say like, hey girl, like we have to look to your values and say, just because you want freedom doesn't mean you're going to be the most responsible while driving. So we need to get you sort of just like you do with senior citizens. Have you ever fought with your grandma and grandpa over driving? Some people are very stubborn about their freedom, which I understand, but they also have to think about values and think about how we can't hurt or put other people at risk. So I think 
without values, you won't know how to recover and you won't know how to treat yourself or people better. So you'll know in your intuition, something is wrong and I should be treated with more dignity, like we talked about last night in the live stream, dignity. But without values, you won't know how to be dignified in that moment. You won't know how to tell yourself, even though I want to get in my car and drive, I'm not going to. And like I said, I haven't seen this video of Brittany driving. Let's see if we can find it. But I definitely know that I'm not completely surprised, right? Because it's not about being perfect just because she got her freedom back, right? Let's see. This is TMZ. Right there. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, pass on the double yellows. You can't do that. I'm so sorry. Do you have your license? Okay, first of all, I think we've all used this excuse when getting pulled over. I certainly have. <laughs> okay, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to shade you. Hold on. There we go. My security at my house has my passport okay. and my driver's license. Okay. I just flew from Mexico. Okay, you haven't gotten your license yet? I stopped you a few weeks ago and you're supposed to get your license. Okay, I think many people do this. So right now I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary. So again, when mentally ill people are put under the microscope, they're held to a higher standard than we even hold people without mental illness. Because people without mental illness or without trauma also do these things constantly, constantly. So again, I want to judge her through the lens of how do we hold accountable the people around us. And a lot of the time, you know for a fact you have left your house without your license or not had your insurance done or if you were a young teenager who's not affording or not a young teenager but a young adult who had who's not affording it okay so again nothing that's totally out of the ordinary yet okay um do you know you can't pass on the double yellows yes, sir. okay yeah the reason for that is there's private driveways so um so people are pulling in and out Okay, um, do you have any like photo ID or anything with your name on it? I, I know who you are, but. Um, okay, you really gotta carry it. Is there a reason why you don't carry it with you? No, it's because I forgot to take it back from the. Okay, I've done this hundreds of times, like left my house without my registration or my license because like I moved into my room to do paperwork. So like, again, she shouldn't be using it as an excuse, but we've all lied to a cop before. Yeah. So do they. Like, so you fly him to the airport, right? Yes. And then they take it from you and they take it home? I can't really hear her. They take the dogs, they take the security. At the airport? Yeah, well, they want to take it and they take it to the thing and they search it. All of this is very normal. Like, literally, I don't see anything weird yet. I never did that before, so my security is very cautious about the passports and everything and make sure that... Um, I'm not taking advantage of when they... And also, she's on a country road, so I'm kind of less concerned about her swerving on it, if I'm going to be real with you, as somebody who grew up, like, in a country road. So I don't see... I haven't seen a car drive by yet. They were really kind of rude last time I was... God. And remember, bubbles, right? That's why. Uh, Ma'am, uh, here's your... That information. What's your uh, address out here? Do you know your address out here? Uh, okay. You sure? Are you sure that's what it is? Is that considered um, Thousand Oaks or is it Newbury Park or Westlake? Hmm. And do you know the zip code by any chance? Do you know the zip code by any chance? No. Um, okay, I'll look it up real quick. Yeah, yeah. Says last time I did my registration, I was like three years of driving around oblivious because my brain. It hasn't been that long. And I was like, what? I did it last year. Bro, in Arizona, they let me register for two years at a time. It is very hard to remember to re-register. Or I always end up forgetting to put the sticker on the back of my car. Like, almost always. I just, like, getting from my room to the paperwork down to my car is, like, so many spoons for me that I always forget to put my sticker on. I don't know how many, how long I drove around with expired tabs. Even though I had the real tabs, they were sitting in my room. And I was like, oh, I just, I'll do it eventually. <laughs> And when cops would pull me over, I just like, bro, like, I just keep forgetting to put it on. I'll do it. And they give you a warning and it's like, whatever. Um, but it is one of those things where, again, depending on who you are and where you are, like my brothers have driven around without expired tabs. Like, yes, it's like you'll get pulled over. My brother drove around for the long time without a headlight. Like, it's awful. Don't do that. But it is like he had one headlight. But it is one of those things where 
again, like this isn't the weirdest thing ever. Being on a country road, I don't even know what a lane is. So frankly, like I'm not weird about that. I kind of feel like he could have just pulled her over because he wanted to meet Britney Spears, but he also could have just like pulled her over because he needed a quota. He also pulled her over because she broke the law. Like, you know what I mean? But a lot of us break the law driving. I don't know why anyone acts superior when they're driving. When we've all sped, we've all gone under the speed limit. We've all crossed the double line. We've all done a U-turn when we weren't supposed to. So I don't want to hear any high and mighty people out here being like, I'm a perfect driver. Girl, you and your mom, okay? 3140. And just confirm, so your license is at your house? Um, is there a way you can make like a photocopy and you can keep it in that same envelope that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell her everything, dude. It's still when you get home, you forget to do it. Like literally, I mean this in the nicest way. Like, yes, we should do it. And it's not the hardest thing in the world. But literally, am I the only neurodivergent bitch that gets home and then like totally forgets? My partner would be like, what are we getting at the store? And I'll look at him. I'm like, I don't know. That was a conversation an hour ago. How am I supposed to remember these things? No, no, ma'am. Like, I, I want to be honest with you. We all have our different strengths. And yes, people are going to get high and mighty and be like, as a responsible adult, you should be perfect at always having your registration, and your license on you. You and your mom can go be perfect over there. OK. I never asked humanity to be perfect. OK. And I promise you, I'm not out here just trying to pull you over. Oh, OK. And I understand because you don't want people to like try to take it as a souvenir or something. So, um. Well, he said that, but then he sold his footage to TMZ. So, you know, so, you know. And I just want you to know that I'm not out here trying to pull you over. I'm out here looking for uh, people speeding and passing over the double yellows, okay? I'm just looking up the zip code. Have we seen any cars pass by? Okay, ma'am, so I'm going to be issuing a citation for passing over the double yellows. Okay, that's when good. it's not allowed. Yeah, he should definitely do that. Um, just sign in the red box by signing. You're not admitting to doing it. All you're doing is promising you're going to take care of the ticket with the court. Uh, okay, that's good. There. And then I'm going to give you a copy. Um, it should be mailed to your address, so hopefully that's the correct address. But if not, um, the court's in Simi Valley. There's some contact information down below, okay? Do you have any questions? Okay, uh, make sure everything's correct. And then here you go. Um, you're free to go. Just drive safely, okay? Look at that country road. Brennan Spears. Okay. Okay, yeah, no biggie. Cool. Uh, literally daily life for some people. So I saw no huge red flag there. You guys can watch it on your own if you like. Thank you, TMZ, for providing the content. I will link it in my clip when I clip this in a few days. Um, yeah, don't see any huge red flags there. Uh, seems like a normal, I don't know, seemed pretty normal to me. Um, but okay, so I, you know, so Britney Spears and her memoir, ugh, brosifs, like, <sighs> such a good memoir, but it tells you so much about a person, where they come from, what their life is like, you know what I mean, where they, where, how are they raised, what is this, like, okay, something fascinating about her bubble, she had been having sex, sex since 14, with a boy who was a senior, she was a freshman, 17, Okay, super scandalous where I've come from, but also not completely abnormal either. So obviously my mom kept me away from that kind of stuff and made it made it sure I was never alone with a boy in a room. But some of my friends were having sex that way, like freshmen and seniors, right? And fascinating because, of course, the publicity, the public, the branding was that her and Justin basically lost their virginity to each other. That's how I remember it. That's I'm pretty sure how everyone remembers it. So interesting like so interesting how one we brand ourselves and two how we forget how normal Britney's life was at one point and how that bubble normalizes things like that because like I said in my bubble that's very uncommon teen pregnancy was like a huge scandal but again if you went to my secular friends it was like you know it happened I think in my public school we had like three or four pregnant girls walking around which was, in itself was kind of scandalous like there was a conversation where people would say should these girls even be on campus because they're encouraging girls to get pregnant early as if our grandma's my grandma was certainly pregnant by 15 so and that was cultural so again it's not like women around the world aren't the girls aren't around the world aren't suffering but I like how we're supposed to like shoo these girls away and hide them from the public instead of being aware of like, hey, teenagers are getting pregnant. Should we do something about this? Instead, we're like, we should shoo them away. It's so interesting. Um, 
Discord says Britney needs to disappear from the public eye for a while. Uh, go do like Britney and work on a farm for a while. Get out of the public. Me, Britney. Go, uh, go out of the public eye and all its scrutiny and inability to see her introspect. Find her values. Find people who are authentically love and see her. Get some good uh, sleep and eat and go for daily walks. Meditate. The problem is that she's a mom and her kids go to school. So she also doesn't have the luxury right now to do that because, again, we don't want her to abandon her children and give them over to, like, just Kevin Federline the whole time or her mom or somebody else because, like, she's not talking to her family. So she's a mom. She might not have the privilege of just disappearing into the country away from her kid's school and she can't necessarily make them homeschool, right? So we have to remember that even Britney Spears with all of her – accessibility can't just abandon her kid's life because mom's good. It's like that TikTok meme of like, you want to have a breakdown, but you're also a mom. You know what I mean? It's like, I think there's like that consideration as well, which I feel for. I would love for her to be getting some sort of support, go out and meditate and stuff. But even that, I always say introspection is a privilege. To be able to introspect, to be able to spend time with yourself and breathe is an introspect, right? Just joined the stream. I don't know if you mentioned it already, but is that a human's going to human mug? It is. I just, it's almost out. I even have the sweater. It came out really good. I'm contacting the merch lady. We're having an issue with the way the website looks. And I just feel like it's very confusing. And I was like, I just need you to fix this one thing so we can launch this merch. And I'm really bad at email. So it's really me for not emailing back right away. I'm just like so bad with paperwork stuff. But we are... Very close to launching a little merch site with three different items that I'm really happy with. I use the mugs on a daily basis and the sweater is awesome. So I'm very excited to show it to you guys. We're very close. I just, we want to get the website more like it doesn't, when I look at it, it's not exactly, I'm like, mm, you need to like fix this thing. So they are working on it. They are working on it. Um, let me see. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me scroll up. Um, <laughs> Brittany versus Brittany boxing match. I would do a hug match. Oh, my mom was diagnosed with dementia recently, lost the ability to drive. That is so difficult. I'm really sorry to hear that. Honestly, I'm so sorry to hear that. That must have been really difficult. And while it was a struggle to reassure her it was for her best, she loved um, us driving her around. It was scary at first, but best. Ugh. Ugh. Having her memoir out and her shit on the public, I could understandably be triggering for Brittany, who had a great pain from being in the public eye, for sure. For sure. Too many little things to remember. That's how I feel about everything, guys. I feel like everything is too little. Like even our healthcare, like my healthcare, like, oh, we thought we were going to solve it. Went to the office. Oh, we have one more paperwork we need. One more thing we need. One more thing we need. And it's like, <laughs> okay, getting out of the house and getting it done. And I know it sounds like really easy for some people because for you, it's probably super easy. But not everybody works that way. You know what I mean? Not everybody works that way. When I was 19, I was driving from Cali to Utah. Great drive. And this group of guys were tailing me. Finally passed me and flipped me off. I tailed them going over 90 miles an hour yelling, bitch, I'm black and Arab. I'm a different kind of crazy girl. <laughs> no, it wasn't right. But did I do it? Yes, girl. Uh, I'd rather hear your stories of messing up uh, than the times you followed the rules. Oh, for sure. I mean, okay. One time I was driving through Texas. Here's my story. <laughs> Okay, I was on one of my road trips. Uh, this is the one without Indiana. So I was just in my car, no trailer. And I had a Honda CRV, fire car, such a good car. And I was on a highway heading to Houston to go see my brother. And I was running late. We were trying to go to church on a Sunday together, but I obviously wasn't going to make it, bros. And then I had to pee, but genuinely was not about to stop at any of these gas stations because it looked a little too sus for me. I was like, uh, I'm going to wait for a Starbucks. So the nearest Starbucks was kind of far away. And I had been driving all night because I always drive at night because I hate people. And the sun rose and it was still really early. It was like 6 a.m. in the morning. The sun was rising. I was alone on this highway. Like I was alone, okay? 80 miles an hour was the legal speed limit because Texas be crazy and wild. Montana and Texas got wild speed limit. I love that. Okay. So I'm driving my 80. But then I was like, 
why go 80 when you can go 100? <laughs> so I cruise controlled at 100 and I was just chilling. I was like listening to my music, listening to my music, going 100, doing my thing. And then all of a sudden I'm getting pulled over and I was like, oh, and I always try to get a ticket every 10 years. That's my goal. Not to get the ticket, but to at least not get a ticket, you know? So after 10 years of not being pulled over, I get pulled over. Uh, let me rephrase. Uh, 10 years of not getting a ticket because I don't really get pulled over either, but I, I've only gotten a ticket once. So then this was my second time to get a ticket. I get pulled over and he goes, where are you from? And I was like, well, you know, that's a good question. I guess California. And I'm driving to go see my brother. I'm definitely late for church and I've got to pee. Which was technically true, but also kind of a fib. Like I was, I could have peed at a gas station. I just didn't want to because they looked icky. Even though I pee at a lot of gas stations. But you know what? You know, you want to go for the loves gas stations or the nicer ones. You know what I'm saying? So I'm driving like 100 on cruise. And he goes, okay, girl, I got you for 99. I was like, okay. He's like, I'm not going to take your license because a lot of people do that out here. But I'm going to give you a ticket. And the ticket was like 450 bucks. And I was like, fuck. So, okay, fine. Okay, I was making like $1,500 a month at the time because I was road tripping and doing Patreon. It was good. It worked out. No big deal. But I kind of laughed because I was like, man, that's the first time I got a ticket in a while. But I tried to use the church excuse. I tried to use the pee excuse. I tried to get out of that ticket. He was cute. They were both rangers and like their little hats. But I was breaking the law. But did I try to get out of that ticket? Yes, ma'am, I did. Did I know I was breaking the law? Absolutely. I'm not a child. I know what it is to speed. Okay. And did he give me that ticket anyways? He did. I'm not cute enough to get out of tickets. Let me tell you, I am not cute enough as a girl to get out of tickets. I don't have that privilege. So do I drive fast when given the opportunity? Absolutely. In Arizona and in Houston, if you drive slow, they're going to run you off the road. Let me tell you. Okay. So, you know, late for church, sir. <laughs> I literally was like, <laughs> it did not work. It did not work. Did not work. Let me tell you. Eh, what are you going to do? So anyways, like I'm I'm used to, you know, trying to get out of tickets if I can. It never works. Always get the ticket. But also, you know, I don't, what are rules really? Like what are rules? You know, <sighs> good times, good times, good times. Well, this, this, that video was that supposed to be, oh my gosh, what an earth shattering kaboom. No, I just think like people make a big deal out of things based off their own values, which is like fair. But for me, like, I don't care. Like I know a person who's old, older, they're like, I guess almost elderly. And they're very much like a, a rule follower. Like they think everyone should follow the rules to the T. And like, I could never, I could never believe that. Segregation was a rule. Making like interracial marriage illegal was a rule. You want me to follow your rules just cause you've decided they're reasonable? Nah, brah. And then everyone's like, society will break down. Maybe society should break down in parts. You feel me? Like, okay. Anyways. <clears throat> Unrelated, but I love the new YouTube profile pic. Perfect mix of adorable and professional. Thank you. Exactly what I was going for. I was doing the rebranding because, you know, I'm always trying new things of what I feel like. And I was like, man, I want something with Indiana. I feel like people don't know her anymore because she can't. She doesn't come in this room. So I keep my office closed. For two reasons. One, so my partner can have privacy. And so he doesn't feel like he, you know, can't talk and do his thing without being overheard or something, right? So I want him to have his privacy. But Indiana scratches at the doors. Whether she's in one room or another, she can't stay put. So even if she's in this room with me, eventually she's like, I need to leave. And also this chair doesn't have a good backing for her to lay on top of it. So she can't sleep here. So she wants to be in the room with me, but then she gets sick of me and wants to go with him. So she, he has like a little cat bed, like a little nest for her in his his office. And so he go, she goes and hangs out with him. And I think she prefers him during the day from what we've noticed. Me for like the early evenings and then him for the late evenings since I sleep on my stomach. He like, we, we trade off. It's really interesting. Oh, and fun fact about cats. I never knew this. He was telling me the other day, he was like, you know how Indiana lets you boop noses? I was like, yeah. And he goes, you know, cats don't do that. I was like, what do you mean? And apparently like cats have certain levels of like comfortability with people. I've never tried it with another cat, but Indiana and I will boop noses. So I'm a, I boop my nose to Indiana's nose. And I was like, no, she'll let you boop her nose. He went to go boop noses with Indiana and she was like, like she wouldn't boop his nose. And I was like, oh. What is this? I was like, is this for real? Like, is this a thing some cats feel? Like, they don't want to boop noses with just anybody? 
fast forward just a little bit of time later, I was like, okay, we spent a, like boop her now. And now she boops noses with him. So it's a very big deal. <laughs> it's a very big deal that Indiana boops noses now. But anyways, I wanted to add Indiana into the pictures because I wanted people to know that I love her and she's here with me in spirit. I'm not sure if the officer sold the footage to TMZ or if TMZ obtained this footage via FOIL requests. That's true. We don't know. That is true. That is true. Oh, I'm in Texas. I was actually born and raised in Houston. Girl, how do you survive in Houston? I mean, don't get me wrong. My brother loves living there. He thrives. It's a vibe for him. I was actually, I visited him for the first time during that huge, huge hurricane that came in and just completely totaled so much of it. His car was totaled. His apartment was totaled. That was crazy. Ooh, my most scary road rage was also around Houston with my ex. He tried to pass a lady and she snapped, threw her kid's sippy cup out the window at us. Jeez. Bro. That's crazy. Ugh. Mm. I love her. I love Indiana Jones. I can't tell you how much I love my cat. She's just so sweet. Does she blink or wink at you? That's a sign of love? I mean, I think so. I've never really paid attention, but I feel like she does. Our cat, Georgia, wants me to hold her all the time and she'll wrap her arms around me like a hug. <laughs> That's so sweet. I love it. Now, does anyone have anything interesting about the Britney, uh, Britney memoir you guys want to talk about before we get into the crux of today's video, which is going to be long? Um, I'm trying to think. Interesting that her grandma killed herself because of the death of a child. I thought that was interesting. You guys got to read this book. It's so interesting. Her father, June, was a total abuser to her dad. And then her dad ended up being an alcoholic who was abusive to his kids. That's what I'm saying. I don't know why people get so upset. Look. When I make comments about how kids will end up, it's not to say that the consciousness that is your child is dependent on the consciousness you are as a parent. I'm saying the consciousness your child has is going to be stuck in a bubble unless your child pops that bubble and that bubble is going to, their behavior is going to mimic the bubble they were raised in. It's, it's why ch children of divorce do have a statistical probability of difficulty in marriage. And though they don't necessarily have to, it is a generalization we make. And it is a part of like, if you're in dating culture, so many people with divorced parents are like, I don't know if I believe in love. I don't even know if you can have love. I've never seen it myself versus my story is like, yeah, I know what love is. My parents love each other. So I'm very confident I could get what my parents had and I did, but I knew that because I had the working model. So it's not to say that, oh, because Britney Spears' grandpa was abusive, her dad would be abusive, but it's also not that at, out of the ordinary for him to mimic his father in the way that he was raised and conditioned because introspection is a difficult journey to go down. To break generational curses is very, very, very difficult. So again, it's not that I'm saying, I'm, I'm trying to encourage people to be present in their children's lives if they can be, if that's the model that best works for your child because you're trying to give your child an opportunity that maybe you missed out on, but you have to understand that you missed out on something to think about your child in that way. So many of us mimic how we were raised because we think, hey, I turned out good enough. But, you know, depending on your goal, I know there is a lot that my parents, I think, failed on as much as they were amazing. I think my parents failed in ways that I hope I don't fail in as a parent. And even though I'll fail certain things, hopefully it won't be as much as my parents. And then my kids will fail things and maybe not as much as their parents and then so on and so forth. And the cycle will hopefully get better over time, right? That's kind of the goal. So for me, you know, as somebody who wants to break generational curses, I'm heavily considering that might include not having children, which is interesting, right? Because a lot of people don't consider that. They say breaking generational curses means having children and raising them better. But I don't necessarily think that, right? So it is interesting reading Britney's memoir. And even her older brother, Brian, there was an interview the mom did where the mom was like, three of my children have problems. And I just, I can't think of why. And I was like, oh, really? Can't think of one reason? Can't think of two reasons called mom and dad and how they were raised? Like, you can't think of that? Like, it's so interesting, right? Yeah, it says I have the book on my Audible, but I I know I'm going to be balling while listening. and I'm just not ready yet. I'll probably leave a long um, ass emotional comment on your videos in a few days. Please do. I want to read them all. Like I am 
like I said, I got emotional. I definitely, I remember I, I started crying and my partner was like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And I was like, we're not even at the conservatorship yet. We're not even at the conservatorship and I am crying. And it was just because it's so relatable. When you're a struggling person and you're having that relationship with struggle and the world around you is just so sure about you, so sure about everything you do, like the knife dance, the Shakira dance she was doing. And even people on my Twitter were like, Brittany, can you see that Britney Spears needs help? She's dancing with knives. And I'm like, you are the reason people suffer in the world. Everyone is the reason people suffer. But like this particular person is the reason Britney Spears is suffering. Because you think watching that video, your fear has the right to trump Britney's right to dance with knives. And here's Shakira dancing at a praise, dancing at a festival doing it. All of us nerds at Ren Fairs dancing with knives doing it. BDSM Dungeons dancing with knives doing it. People at circuses dancing with knives doing it. Sword swallowing world record holders literally being praised and given certificates. Britney Spears does it and all of a sudden it's the end of the fucking world because you don't want to live in a world where she's getting better or that she's allowed to express herself in a different way. You only live in a world where Britney Spears can only do wrong. Ma'am? Val says, I know that Britney Spears is religious, but do you think leaving the church could help her recover? I don't really think she's that religious, right? I remember she said she was traumatized from therapy and didn't want to go back. I think she's probably more spiritual than religious, if I'm going to be real. To me, being religious means something. Because I know my mom messaged me. And she goes, Britney Spears is joining the Catholic Church. I was like, okay, sure. I'll believe that when she stopped. She, she's not half naked on the internet. Okay? Like... To be a religious like Catholic, you also have to practice modesty. And Brittany is not practicing modesty, which I love, right? But how religious can you be? She believes in God, but in the book, she didn't specify which God. And in public, I know my mom said that she heard she was becoming Catholic. But again, what does that mean? Right? So for me, like, I'm not concerned with her being spiritual. You know what I mean? I'm more interested in, you know... Whatever tool helps her. Sometimes religion can help people. And sometimes it makes it worse. Sometimes you just need it for a moment, right? Abby says, watching that one old interview she had post-breakup with Justin Timberlake was so heartbreaking. The interviewer was so harsh towards someone so young over something so dumb, bro. Every Guys, it felt like my I felt like I was transported in a time machine and I was watching like living history in a completely different way. This memoir made every interview, every memory so different. Do you guys know... That that Madonna Britney Spears kiss on stage made my parents ban us from using the internet for three days because Yahoo News had the kiss on the front page of the internet and my parents didn't want us to see two girls kissing. They did not realize that on Yahoo Music, they also had the Blink-182 music video with two girls kissing for I Miss You, which I used to watch on replay. Because as you guys know, I'm gay. <laughs> so it's just so interesting. You know what I mean? Well, she was doing this thing where she's like, I want to be independent and I want to show my independence. My parents were having, my parents have that as like, we all have our own lived experience with these things. But my mom and dad have it etched into their brain that Britney Spears made their life very stressful for three days, her and Madonna, because they had to keep their kids away from it. What do you think of Justin Timberlake now? <sighs> I mean, not much different if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I haven't been a huge fan of Justin for a bit now. I don't have very harsh criticisms of him if I'm going to be completely honest. I am going to be real. I don't think I can dislike Justin as much as Britney Spears fans feel like they want to because he sounds like a very typical boy. And when I say that, I mean not to excuse his behavior, but to say that for him, he was doing what was very normal in his bubble. It is very normal for guys to buy their women abortion pills or plan B or encourage them to have abortions so they don't have to pay child support or be entangled to that woman for years. It's very normal for someone in the show business to have goals and to do whatever it takes to achieve those goals. To me, it sounded like Justin was thinking about breaking up with Britney but was staying with her for work. And then when they got pregnant, he's like, okay, I have to end this. So in my mind, they were both really young. And so I think I can be also compassionate towards him and remember that he was also making decisions and had people in his ear as well. And he probably had a lot more pressure. Um, not that that than Brittany, but a lot more pressure than we're giving him sort of an allowance for. 
So for me, I'm, I think I'm more open to being compassionate towards Justin than the average person. But I also have disliked Justin for years after he was caught being too handsy with a coworker behind Jessica Biel's back. And I'm more pro Jessica Biel. So I think, you know, I'm, I'm a feminist in my spirit here. So I think that it's somewhere along the lines of Justin's always been kind of, I assume, a womanizer to some extent. I still like some of his music, but I, and I still love NSYNC, girl, you're not going to take that away from me. But I was never like a huge Justin fan anyways. So it's not like I'm more I'm more of a Lance Bass fan myself, you know, you know, love the Britney memoir. The audiobook was so well done. So well done. I loved the audiobook. I loved it. You know, a Renaissance fair. Yeah, the Renaissance fair. I've only been to one run fair. But when I was there, there were some swords. You know what I'm saying? There was knives, you know, <clears throat> It's actually crazy looking back and realizing how young she was when she was being upheld up like a sex symbol and being so objectified, you know, and this is the confusing part. I think we all have to face as, as women who live, oh, this is going to sound so, okay. We all have to acknowledge that as women who live in a world with straight men, not that bisexual, pansexual men can't be awful or gay men, but specifically that they're never, like, I know Brittany kept saying, like, I just want to be free in my body. Why am I a role model for little girls? Like, what does it matter? But that's the problem is that we have to acknowledge as women that little girls are sexualizing themselves because they're listening to the music, because they're seeing the imagery, because they feel like it's empowering. And to be honest with you, I think if you take it out of the context of men watching you, it's actually not that sexual at all. Like if you watch Meg the Stallion and she's just twerking, there's something very powerful about it and non-sexual. And if little girls were doing that in a space with women who were safe, I would actually be okay with it. But because those little girls are being objectified by predators, mostly men, it is one of those things that I'm concerned about. And it's not to say that women don't contribute to predatory behavior towards children, they do. It's just usually done a little bit differently. So I think for me, I would love a space where kids could be half naked and not be sexualized and they could just feel empowered like in a fae, fairy, nudist way. But that's not the world we live in. So we have to almost promote modesty with children to kind of protect them against these predators who, by the way, are going to objectify them whether they're modest or not. Like whether like your children are modest or not, they will be objectified by predators. But what you're doing is you're, you're like mitigating the harm. Like even Kyla, not so erudite, was telling me like, oh, I wouldn't recommend having your baby on stream because a lot of predators will even watch YouTube videos of family vloggers and take the pictures of the babies and sell them on the black market. And so as a mom, I'm like, oh my gosh, if I become a mom, should I even have my baby on stream ever? Because I was going to do the natural mom community thing and like breastfeed and be very natural and be very in the earth. And then I was like, oh, is it worth being in the earth? if my child's image is going to be taken and sold to predators. And so again, the, the it's so nuanced and complicated, but we don't live in a world that all shares our values. We don't live in a world where grown men aren't looking for child brides. We do live in a world where that is common. You know what I mean? And so we have to be diligent as people protecting children to have a discussion about harm reduction around objectification and um, modesty. I think it's just a very difficult conversation to have, but it is one that I think we do need to have. You know what I mean? We have to remember Justin was also a kid at the time. He was. He also was a child. So we have to keep that in mind, right? Just like we're keeping in mind for Brittany. I'm obviously like heartbroken over Brittany and everything that happened with her, but Justin also was a child. Any young adult doing his thing, you know what I mean? I mean, the way the press spoke about her and about about spoke to her and about her at the time, the media in the late 90s and 2000s was gross. I think it's gross now, too. You know what I mean? It's all pretty awful. Didn't Brittany say the abortion was a mutual decision? Uh, Not totally a mutual decision. Right. She did it. But if she was on her own, she wouldn't have done it. She did it because she's a people pleaser. And I think that's the problem. When people make decisions, it's fair to take your partner into consideration but my partner and I believe it's ultimately like my decision because it's my body. But I do take his opinion into serious consideration because we're on a team. But because it's my body and I've already warned him, like I would struggle to get an abortion, but I would get an abortion for the right reason. 
You know what I mean? It's one of those things where it, it's very much things we've talked about versus Brittany and Justin. They probably just didn't talk about it. How do they even get pregnant in the first place? You know what I mean? And so it's one of those things where it is a mutual decision, but it wasn't like really a mutual decision. She said in the memoir, I don't know if you've read it, but in the memoir, she said, if it wasn't for Justin, I would have kept that baby. So I don't, I, you know, it's like, yes, she's not, she can't hold, she can't blame it on Justin, but she can also blame it on her past self for not listening to her. She can put the onus on herself for saying, honestly, I should just have that baby. You know? It was interesting to learn that Britney Spears was having sex at 14, but she had to pretend uh, virginity to get the child audience and feed adult fantasies. Amazing, isn't it? This is why my mom had so many problems growing up with these women and these like movie stars and these young girls because she was like, she would warn me. I swear my mom knows things. She would warn me all the time. She's like, what you're seeing is not real. I'm telling you it's not real. I'm telling you. Actually, you know what's so funny? You know how we said that about Rosanna the other day, the girl who went after Mr. Beast and how she has like this Disney character that everyone buys into. And I'm like, I don't know her. But Sidim and Toast Ken just did a video about her and apparently he knew her back in the day as a part of the OG YouTuber group and he knows her husband and he was like, um, this was totally like a, this was like probably business. Like this was, this is silly. Like even he was like, like we're all here to like, you know, okay. So I'm sitting here like there's something, okay. Don't, I don't, YouTubers with big brands, people with brands, this is very specific when you are running a brand versus just a YouTuber. Like, like brand yourself, yes, like casually. Oh, we're going to talk about this with Boogie today about if he's a one or not, which is like going to be very interesting. But we're going to talk about that because I was watching Papa Gut review it. And Papa Gut's like, why doesn't he get his brand under control? And it's like, it's difficult because for a lot of YouTubers, they have a hard time sticking to the brand and the criteria of the brand. Like I have a loose brand and I'm okay with that. But if I had a hardcore brand, I would have to change a lot of what I'm doing, right? Do you think if Brittany was a male, she would have been placed under a conservatorship? No fucking way, bro. No fucking way. No fucking way. That's what I mean to say. Men can be crazy, belligerent. Mel Gibson was never put under a conservatorship. All these movie stars, these men who go around fucking everything up, none of them are put in conservatorships. No fucking way women who suffer are absolutely treated and completely differently and worse than men who do if not the same worse the blatant sexism that impacted and misogyny that impacted britney spears's life is so blatantly clear to me which is why her mother is even more dare i say evil <laughs> whatever that means right because of the way her mom even stood by and let it happen. I think a member of the Beach Boys was put under a conservatorship. Charlie Sheen was, Charlie Sheen never had a conservatorship. The Beach Boys, that's interesting. Was that because he was in a band and so the band members also encouraged it? <clears throat> Ezra Miller was all over the place. And by the way, I don't want conservatorships. I don't want to say, oh, these men should also be under them. I want to say these men should be given help and Brittany should be given help and they should be allowed to spend all their money or not spend it. But somebody they trust should be able to help like somebody they trust should be able to help. You know what I mean? And not ruin their lives. And that's the problem is like whoever was trying to quote unquote help Brittany was not helping her, her parents. They were not helping. And that is ultimately the dilemma, right? I purposely don't advertise my virginity because men will want to fuck me just because they want to make me another notch in their belt. True. That's true. <clears throat> Ooh, yeah, I feel the same way about FK Twig cell phone video. Such a good video. Such a good video. Such a good video. Um, our cellophane, cellophane, sorry, not cell phone, cellophane video. Uh, it's haunting and beautiful. Pole dancing is athletic and graceful. It doesn't have to be sexual. Total agree. Total agree. Don't you think that is a lack of care for men, not just trying to control women? Like I think Kanye needs psychiatric help. Um, 
again, I don't believe in conservatorships and I don't think you should lock people up and le- like at all. Like I don't believe in facilities except for people who want to go there. So I think it is probably both. It's a lack of care for men, but it's also it's because people generally believe men more than they believe women in regards to their ability to take care of themselves. Like people do doubt, even now, people will doubt a woman's ability to take care of herself. There's whole movements based off of this. Women can't really take care of themselves. Women need a man. Without a man, how will she provide for herself? So it's a double-edged sword. In some bubbles, there is this narrative that no matter what a woman does, no matter how successful she is, ultimately she needs a man to take care of herself. And then on the other side of it, there is this like fear that all men are just like ticking time bombs ready to go off and destroy your life, which could be true. So I think it still depends on the bubble, right? But both narratives exist at the same time. So both narratives exist. I don't think the government should come in and take Kanye away from himself. I think either Kanye needs to feel safe and have the right people around him or you know what I mean? Or he needs to put himself in a facility. But for me, like, I think it is, I'm pretty anti-facility unless someone volunteers to go there. I don't think the government should have the right to put you somewhere. And I think your loved ones um, don't have the right necessarily. Well, that's the problem is like, I, I can think of scenarios in which you might need it. I'm really lucky. Like if somebody in my inner circle had this problem, like we trust each other to take care of each other. So the dilemma with this is that you might not be in that situation. So again, like if you have a crazy family, do you really want them to be in charge of you? And if you have the government, do you really want them to be in charge of you? So it's really scary. It's why you should put in place now, maybe in a living will or something, like who gets to take care of you? It's why in some ways I want to make money and make sure that I'm stable. P.S. like the stream, it's free, thank you. Because I wanna make sure if we get dementia, if we have any problems, we can take care of each other because literally I don't know how many senior citizen abuse home videos I have to watch to just like make me so upset at the idea of like putting my loved one in that home just to see them getting abused. Like I can't handle it. I can't handle it. You know what I mean? (sighs) The question becomes about forced psychiatric help. Kanye does not need to be locked up or forced into treatment. Forcing it can hurt more than help. I agree with that. Yeah. People forget how many women got lobotomized in the 50s and 60s because of mental health issues that related to postpartum depression. Literally, that husbands made the decision on its historical phenomenon. Literally, literally. Like my brother just messaged me that the other other day. He's like, oh my God, Brittany, it's crazy to think how many lobotomies we gave people and we thought we were helping them. And I was like, I know. He's like, this is crazy. Like every time I see something on it, I'm just like, what? And I'm like, I know, I know. It's just so, so sad. So look, I'm all about giving people a way out and not trapping them because like that's my biggest fear. Like Brittany for 13 years was living my own personal hell. And look, I will take my anti-LGBT parents any day because they're not the kind of parents who would ever trap you in their home. They really are like, go, go, go live your life. You know what I mean? Even if you're self-harming, we we trust in you. And that was the right decision. It's very difficult to know what to do. All the times I attempted, all the times I struggled with unaliving myself, I am so grateful every day that no one in my life ever called the cops on me or ever like got it on my record or ever institutionalized me. They trusted me to make a decision about my life and I will always be grateful for them for giving, for trusting me to make that decision and getting through my struggles. Because to be honest, I could openly talk about it, which ironically made them a support system, which actually gave me a plenty of reasons to kind of like fail my attempts and also kept me alive in a really weird way. Because if they hadn't trapped me, if they had forced me into a facility, that would have been another reason to unalive myself because the world is always the reason I want to unalive myself. It's not me. I don't want to die. The world trapping me is the fear because the world is a very scary place that will throw you in jail over a plant that will that will like literally whip you in public over the relationships you're having with same sex people will literally justify the bombing of your children because it sounds good to them no matter what side you're on. Like the world is a very crazy place sometimes, sometimes in some places, you know, Oh, my friend with bipolar got her baby taken away and given to a relative. I'm so sad. Yes, she cannot take care of the baby, but her family had enough resources to help her take care of the baby. Oh, that's really sad. Yeah. I think her dad forcing her to take lithium and birth control. Yes. Were probably the scariest details to me about her conservatorship. Lithium. Like when she said that, I was like, I'm shook. I'm shook. Yeah. Yeah. That was shocking to me where I was like, really, dude, my mom and dad would never do this to me. 
I am so lucky, like in some ways, like they would never do this to me. They would just never. I remember when she went on birth control, my mom was really like, oh, this is very weird that her parents would do this to her. Now, in some ways, you could see how being on birth control is the right thing to do because you don't have to accidentally have a baby. And in some ways, like Sarah Silverman saying that her kids were the two cutest mistakes. Like, I can understand what you're saying. You're saying, why did she have a baby with Kevin Federline? And I agree with that. But also, Brittany talked very highly about Kevin. Wasn't that interesting? That even though she was critical of everyone in her life, she spoke pretty highly of people. She was very kind and very thoughtful and very self-aware of her own mistakes. She called herself out multiple times in this memoir. She even called herself out for being a bad mom at one point and said like, I will be better. And that is so impressive to me because so many people can't do that as parents. And she did that in her memoir. You remember when she was holding her son in the bathroom and she's like, that wasn't the right thing to do. Guys, my whole family as a collective is so terrified of our kids getting taken away that literally like her shaving her head and having her tantrum in the car, fair. Like everything she did, we're all like fair. Like in hindsight, fair. You know what I mean? And even at that time, you know what was funny? My mom, I remember her saying like something is severely wrong in her life and I bet it's the parents. And I said, why do you think that? And she goes, because her parents are the one who put her here. And I said, how do you know that? And she goes, because she was a child and her parents are the ones who took her to those auditions. Something is going on here. And I was like, really? Um, is the audiobook good? It's so good. The audiobook is really good. That's what I did. I did the audiobook. I finished it in two days. I really recommend it. You know what I mean? Nobody even asked her. Nobody even told her. Mm. Mm. That's what's crazy is like we surprise the mentally ill. We're like, oh, this person is like they, we surprise them. We don't treat them like people. We don't sit them down like, hey, bro, so you know how you're doing this thing right now? Not a no-go. I'll tell you this. In my own marriage, in my relationship, one of the things we've established is that my partner and I have talked about this. I do trust him. I've made the decision to trust him based off of his values to never screw me over, but also to protect our children over me, but never at the expense of me. Our children would come first. We've talked about this. Let's say we have kids and I have postpartum depression and it's really, really bad. What do we do? And he goes, well, first, you can't be alone with the kids. I was like, okay, fair. He goes, second, we would get my mom involved or we'd have someone come help or I would watch the kids and you could work because you could still work. And I was like, true, I'd want to work. I think that would keep me really stable. Much like Brittany, she did really well when she was working, right? I think I would also do the same. I would want to work and I would want to be like supervised with the kids until I felt really secure. And we would do this for the sake of the children, not to punish me. The problem is we punish sick people in America and around the world. We punish people for being sick, not in all cultures, as we talked about a few live shows ago, but in some places in America specifically, we punish mentally ill people. So my partner and I talked about this, how for the protection of our children, we would do certain things, but not to punish me, to make sure our kids are okay, even though mom is having a hard time right now. And I'm terrified of postpartum depression. It's one of the reasons I'm hesitating to have children because I do think I might get hit pretty hard. And if that happens, I think it would be like almost too much to handle given, you know, my maintenance stage right now with my borderline and everything. I just don't want to deal with that when I could just adopt a kid and, and skip the postpartum part. You know what I mean? So it is one of those things where don't surprise the mentally ill, but also I want the mentally ill to be on board with when it's appropriate to protect their children. And that's difficult because you could argue that religious cults and high control settings that in, like you could argue that's a version of being like unsafe to children, but here we go. It's legal in this country or in America, I should say, because I'm in Croatia, but it is one of those things. You know what I mean? That we're really struggling with. What environment is actually good for children? And do we have the right as a government to come in and say, you can't have your baby? Because right now babies are living under horrible circumstances of people just in poverty. Are we going to take away people's kids because they're living in poverty? No. Are we going to take away kids who are born in really rich families who are neglected? No. Like, at what point did, does the government come in and take away your kid? And that's why people don't get diagnosed or get help for their mental illnesses because they don't want to risk the chance of being separated from their families, which is fair. So again, people always wonder, why do I handle people? Like, okay, because I'm not afraid of the mentally ill. 
I have plenty of reasons to be afraid of everybody generally. I am not more afraid of the mentally ill than the non-mentally ill. In my opinion, they're both equally dangerous in many ways because most mental ill people I've heard of, read about, and know of hurt themselves way before they hurt other people. Literally, they hurt themselves way more often than they hurt other people. And the people without mental health or allegedly without trauma, they tend to hurt other people a lot fucking more in my lived experience, anecdotal. And everything that I've read and everything that I've seen, those people literally tend to hurt people. And there are more people in the world, allegedly, who aren't mentally ill because the mentally ill are allegedly the minority. Okay. So, okay. I'm a little, maybe I'm a little biased, but I find... Then communities that are getting help, they're doing okay. They're mostly just going to hurt themselves, which they have the right to do. It's better than hurting other people, right? And so anyways, anyways, anyways. Do you think parents of child stars are genuinely pretty bad and using the kid as a resource? I think yes, probably. But also not always as a resource. Um, but I do think they're willing to put their children in harm's way. And I personally am pretty against it. Not that I'm like, oh, so there will never be child actors, but kind of. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Like, the, it's not worth it. To me, it is not worth putting my child in a circumstance where they're going to be molested or coerced at a party or being intimate with an adult unnecessarily. My kids are not going to be friends with older YouTubers, Instagram people, anything. Look at all these minors coming out with stories all the time from Kylie Jenner to, um, to Natalie Portman to all of these people. Like, no. Like, you might be willing to give your, like, risk your kid, but I'm not going to do it, frankly. Look at Drew Barrymore. Look at all these people with horror stories. It's like, yeah, I'm not interested. Now, I don't value money and fame, though. And frankly, I don't think I'm going to raise a person who does. But if that person wants to eventually go do it on their own when they're of age, go for it. But, like, yeah, I'm not going to risk my child ever because I'm my job is to protect my child. But then that sounds like, oh, all these parents are abusive. I think all these parents are taking a risk and gambling their child's sanity and life for the possibility of fame. Yes, I do believe that. Hita says, I'm honestly okay with no child actors. They're likely, there's like, ugh. There's likely a way to do it ethically, but most studios won't take the time and most parents don't have enough to navigate it. Exactly. Yeah. Like ultimately, do you guys remember um, the Lolita movie they did? Which by the way, really fantastic book. Very hard to read. It is a very difficult uh, book to read because it's it's very difficult. Let me tell you. Oof. But it's really good. It's written really, really well. It's a, it's a very hard story to get through. One of the, the movie they did with Jeremy Irons um also a very hard movie to get through it's like it's very uncomfortable um i want to know how old the actress was how old was was she when she played lolita um it's a great movie but i know they use an adult actress right because like if a child had done that role i would have been pissed i've been like what are you doing it's already a horrible story as we as it is but why are you like um Let's see. She was. Oh, wait. No, she was a child. She was 15. Eh, fail. Eh, see, fail. I thought she was an adult. I thought she was. Eh, fail. Uh, nope. See, wrong. Why do they have to? Why? Why? Why do children need to be put? See, this is so bad. Like the movie is about a literal pedophile. Sorry, PDF file. Don't demonetize me, YouTube. Thank you. Like, it's already a horrible story that's very difficult and blah, blah, blah. And then on top of it, you're using an actual kid. And not that PDF files actually go for 15-year-olds because they don't. That's like, that's totally not the definition is. It still is like inappropriate in my mind. You know? Oof. My allergies. Oh, my God. Ow. Do you feel like your birth control had changed has changed you in any way? Birth control fucks me up all the fucks me all the way up and I feel like it affects birth control or, uh the effects of birth control are understated. Not saying it has anything to do. Was curious about your experience and also connecting it to Britney Spears and how it affected her. Okay. 
So birth control can have a lot of negative side effects. You know what I mean? Um, and I think a lot of people can feel it. I have had the best experiences on birth control. I love birth control. <laughs> I have had only good experiences basically on birth control. Um, I currently have an uh, um, uh, Nexplanon in. I have the rod in my arm. It's been great. I have a suspicion. I could be wrong though. I wonder if it's like, I don't know. I, a part of me is like, is it making me hold on to five more pounds than I want? I can't tell because right now I'm trying to do, I need to get in my cardio in to like lose this weight to, because I want to bulk, but I don't actually want to get like bigger around the middle. I want to get bigger. Anyway, so I need to lose the weight and then bulk up. So I'm curious about that, but otherwise I've seen no side effects. I don't even think I'm having any. Um, I loved the IUD. That was awesome. I had no period for years. It was the greatest. My second IUD was great, but it did end up slipping too far up into my cervix and they had to take it out, which was a bummer. But I don't know how much her birth control affected her, Britney Spears. And I know birth control has affected some of my friends, but I've had the most wonderful experiences on it. I am so lucky. I feel like it's been the greatest thing I ever did. Now, I never did the pill because I'm never going to remember to take that pill every day, girl. There's no effing way I would remember that. So I've only done the rod and I've done the IUD. And those are the only forms of birth control I've done. I've never done the Nova, Nova Ring. I've never done anything like that. I love it. I just absolutely love birth control, but that is just because it's worked for me. So I don't know. I don't know if it impacted Brittany at all, but I know it does and it can impact women. You know what I mean? Yes, it does change how you hold onto water. That's why. That's my theory. I'm wondering if that's true, but I also mad a cake and pasta and bread when I got to Croatia. So to be fair, I like also could have just gained weight because I was like eating all this food I shouldn't have been eating. Well, at the rate I was eating it. So I kicked bread out of my diet. I'm sticking to mostly chicken and then sometimes rice because like I'm not going to go full on. Let's be real. And then I got to up my cardio because I'm not really getting outside. So that's the next goal is to like up my cardio because jumping jacks are not going to cut it. But yeah, I am curious to see if like even if I'm doing all that, if I don't cut the weight. But you know. But yeah, I just I've really loved birth control. I, I can't say better things about it, honestly. Um... Now that I've went off dual hormone birth control pill to get pregnant, I've realized the uh, progestion and progesterone makes me fart so much, girl. God bless. God bless you, girl. <laughs> the pill sucked for me, made me fat and moody. Yeah, I've heard that. Now, I've heard bad consequences with the pill, specifically the pill. So I don't know if it has something to do with that. But I've been, like I said, my my... IUD and my Explanon were fantastic. Actually, this – so the the IUD lasted five years, was it, guys? I think it's five years for the one I had. And then I had to get a new one. And then this one in my arm will last for three years, I think. I have to double check. I think it's three years. But I've only just had it uh, over a year. October was my year of having it in. So I've been doing great. I've really loved it. When I think about pregnancy farts, I think of Miranda on Sex in the City. <laughs> Silent but deadly. That was – Miranda being pregnant was so funny. It was so funny. Uh, birth control made me crazy. I was on the pill and had a horrible depression and rages. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm really lucky. I've had zero issues with that. My mood has been stable. I've been really happy. Everything's been great. I have had zero depression. Like I said, I haven't had depression in years at this point. Um – yeah, everything's been really great, but I do wonder if it's because it's the not the pill. I hear more things about the pill. I recommend the Nuva Ring. Ah, I had a friend who used it and really recommended it too. It's nice because the hormones are localized, so it doesn't affect my mood as much as the pill. Noted. See? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if it is the pill, right? Now, Brittany, what was Brittany on? Was she on the... I don't remember what birth control she was on. Yeah, I don't remember which one she was on. And also, guys, you know what sucks is I always worry about Amanda Bynes as well. Amanda Bynes is still out there. Lindsay made a comeback. So Lindsay's doing the new um, – she's doing the new Mean Girls movie, which is great. So Lindsay's making a comeback. But Amanda Bynes, I think, is still struggling. 
And I want to, like, again, her, like, how do we help Amanda Bynes, right? Is she next? Like, that's the problem. It's like, oh, my gosh, what is happening with people? I have a copper IUD now. That one killed me. I had that one for a few months and I was bleeding every day for like 20 days. It was the worst pain of my life. I had to get it out right away and switch it out with the Mirena. The Mirena IUD, mm, love the Mirena, loved it. Oof. She had an IUD, okay, yeah. I think she'll probably be fine unless it was the copper IUD. The copper killed me. My, oh, but to be fair, I'm allergic to copper. So that's probably why. But also my doctor told me the copper IUD is the hardest one to handle. She said it's the most painful one. So she did warn me, but I also found out I was allergic to copper. So I'm gay now. So happy I don't have to worry about it. Oh, lucky, lucky. I've uh, heard Lou Taylor's behind a lot of these troubled celebrities like Britney Spears and tries to put them in conservatorships. I'm telling you, love your child enough to keep them away from these greedy, greedy bitches. Keep them away from these people who want to use your children. But parents are the first ones to sell out their kids, I'm telling you. Every story I hear about moms, I've had callers who have literally told me horror stories about how their own parents absolutely used them for money, sold them out as little kids, like abused them. Like it's insane. That's why it's so scary because you don't know who – what family you're going to be born into. There's an injustice being done to a child every moment, which is why you need to be good to your children now. And like, be grateful too for the parents that you had. Like, honestly, as much as my parents obviously didn't do everything perfect, they obviously loved me unconditionally and had my best interest in mind. They obviously picked my health. I literally, guys, the friends around me were literally auditioning for, for bands they were auditioning for movies. Some of my friends got onto Hollywood film sets. They've done movies. I've seen my friends like I grew up with. I was like, oh, there she is. Like she's in this movie I'm watching. And eventually those people ironically did leave and did Broadway instead because they found that it was closer related to like their religion. They ended up going back to Catholicism and Hollywood wasn't going to coincide with that. So people I grew up with, you know what I mean, had opportunities. I mean, I grew up in California. It wasn't that far off to think you could be a celebrity or like a Hollywood celebrity but yeah no yeah yeah I'm glad my parents never encouraged me to choose that life yeah not that I could have done it can I be real with you what Britney does what Rihanna does what Beyonce does going on tour I could never do that that is amazing in some way it is really amazing I could never do that. I could never handle the stress of that. Taylor going on tour, I could never handle the stress of that. So in some ways, they're kind of built for it. Like, how do they even do it? Like, in some ways, they're superheroes because I could never do that. But they somehow manage. And I don't know how they do it. Like, I genuinely don't know. So maybe in some ways, they're almost like destined to do it because they couldn't have been anyone else. And so that's something to consider from like a philosophy perspective or a uh, sort of a destiny perspective, like a, a determined perspective, you know? I mean, you're a micro celebrity. Um, no, not really. No, no. I'm like a Z celebrity, like a Z list celebrity. I'm not a celebrity. A celebrity would be somebody that like, um, what I am is I'm a public figure, but I don't think you would call me a celebrity. I think that's like a different word. Uh, celebrity to me, like, I don't, is, um, like Trisha Paytas tries to get in the news, which we love for her and Moses. They try to get clipped, right? You know how people were covering her costumes this year? Trisha is a mini celebrity. Trisha is what I call a micro celebrity in the real way because she's famous enough that some people know her, but not like Britney Spears know her, right? Everyone knows Britney. Like Michael Jackson is known around the whole effing world. So I call... I call Trisha Paytas like an internet celebrity. You know what I mean? Are you an influencer? Uh, I think maybe, right? Like I just, I don't know if all YouTubers are celebrities. Is Dr. Kirk Honda a celebrity just because he's a YouTuber who, who's also a therapist? Like it just feels like a weird way to say that we're celebrities. Like it doesn't feel like a celebrity to me, right? It feels just like a content like this is the job in which I do this job on the internet and happens to be people watching me. 
but maybe like I don't know I think I'd consider myself more of a celebrity maybe if I had more of a specific brand or a specific thing I'm just like I think I'm just using I don't know it feels like a weird category to identify me as uh but maybe in some people's eyes I guess I'm trying to think of who else I would say. Like, okay, The Diary of a CEO, we watch his podcast. He's not a celebrity. He's a podcast host, right? Like, not everybody who hosts something is the celebrity. He's the host that invites people on. He interviews the celebrities, but he's not one himself. And then there are people who run podcasts who are celebrities. Yes, you're kind of like a professor. A lot of people know them, but they're not celebrities. That's how I feel. I feel like I'm known and a lot of people, like enough people know who I am, but I'm not the celebrity. Like I'm the person celebrities go to for advice. <laughs> That's what I feel like I am. True local news anchors aren't celebrities, but mainstream network celebrities are, yes, are celebrities for sure. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Should we move on to Boogie? Because I think it's going to be a long video and it's interesting. Um, it's a recent documentary that came on YouTube. Papa Gut was reviewing it earlier and I was like, oh, I got to review this because I kept asking myself the whole time, is Boogie a one? Is this what's happening? So um, thank you for the Britney Spears discussion. I really appreciate it. Please read her memoir or listen to it if you guys haven't. Totally worth it. Such like a, such an eye opener for a millennial who was like remembers the news coming. Like I remember being where I was every story. I remember it. You know what I mean? So it was so cool to listen to her recount it because then I had to like think about my life and it, it's so nice when other people's stories resonate with your life so you can like reflect. So definitely recommend it. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living like it was a fool Dun, 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 dun. 